Welcome to the Splunk Education, What's New in Splunk Enterprise Security 7.1 course. Before taking this course, students should have a working understanding of Splunk Enterprise Security. We recommend the following courses, administering Splunk Enterprise Security and using Splunk Enterprise Security. Let's take a look at our course objectives. We'll start by introducing the new cloud-based streaming analytics service and how it integrates Splunk's behavior analytics, also referred to as BA, with enterprise security. We'll describe some enhancements made to the risk-based alerting framework and how it incorporates assets and identities, as well as entity zones. We'll examine the new threat topology visualization, which shows the relationship between risk objects and threat objects, then we'll review the new MITRE ATT&CK matrix, which is available for risk notable events in the Incident Review Dashboard. We'll then describe various upgrades made to ES dashboards, including upgrading to Splunk Dashboard Studio. And finally, we'll provide some links to new documentation available for risk-based alerting and troubleshooting large KV store collections. Let's look at the course outline. Topic 1 cloud-based streaming analytics, topic two, enhanced risk-based alerting, topic three, threat topology visualization, topic four, the MITRE ATT&CK matrix, topic five, dashboard changes, and topic six, new documentation. We start with cloud-based streaming analytics, integrating Splunk's behavioral analytics service into Splunk Enterprise Security. With cloud-based streaming analytics, we can detect suspicious behavior in real time for common threat use cases. It allows for seamless integration of BA with ES to take advantage of the risk-based alerting framework, improving visibility into risk events, true positive detection, and reducing alert fatigue. With scalable analytics, Splunk can analyze data as it's being sent and scale concurrent searches, evolving beyond traditional scheduled searches. The streaming analytics service is simple to deploy, is cloud native, and is a low maintenance solution. Key use cases for cloud-based streaming analytics include the following identifying risky entities, find the needle in the haystack faster with behavioral analytics, entity risk scoring. Entity risk scoring works out of the box to synthesize ES notable events, UBA anomalies via ES, and risk events with BA anomalies. Out of the box streaming security analytics, leverage BA to identify and validate security use cases such as credential dumping, malicious PowerShell, and privilege escalation. Improve mean time to respond using mission control response templates with BA. Enhances ES notables with BA anomalies within an investigation to improve the MTTR to a breach in your organization. Enabling the behavioral analytics service is simple. On the cloud-based tenant, access the Enterprise Security app. If eligible, the window to enable the service will appear. Select the checkbox to allow ES to generate a token for authentication and the ability to send data to the Behavioral Analytics Service, then click Enable. If you do not enable the service here, you can always enable it from the ES General Settings menu. Our next topic is Enhanced Risk-Based Alerting, or RBA. We start with an overview of RBA. Notable events are noteworthy events related to risk scenarios that require attention or triaging. Creating a notable event for every risky scenario generates alert fatigue and apathy. But with risk-based alerting, only a risky scenario will create a risk event. RBA only creates a risk notable when groups of risk events exceed a risk threshold. Risk notables contain a risk object field, which corresponds to the subject of the risk event. 
By default, risk events are grouped by risk object when evaluating for risk thresholds. For example, a suspicious login event with an IP address of 108.10.60.238 will have a risk object field with that IP address. Next, we have an overview of the Asset and Identity Framework. In ES, notable events often reference common entities. An entity is a generic term encompassing users, accounts, identities, devices, or assets. The ANI framework allows analysts to create configurations which automatically enrich events referencing these entities. Assets and Identities allows analysts to configure multiple entities to correspond to the same asset or identity, allowing any event containing a subset of these entities to be grouped together. For example, assets may contain IP and MAC addresses, as well as host and DNS names. Identities may contain information like an identity name, email, address, and location. The framework allows entities with this information to be grouped together. Integrating Asset and Identities with RBA. Prior to ES 7.1, risk events were strictly grouped by risk object. If multiple risk events contained different risk objects, they would not be grouped, even if the risk objects referred to the same asset or identity. When risk events are not correctly grouped, they may generate multiple notables cluttering incident review with separate but related risk events, making triage difficult. In ES 7.1, a normalized risk object field has been created in the risk data model for integrating assets and identity data. The field is assigned to risk events so that correlation searches can group risk events that correspond to the same asset or identity. Risk Object Normalization With ES 7.1, the normalized underscore risk underscore object field is used when creating risk notable events and displaying risk metrics in the risk analysis dashboard. As you can see here, the Most Active Sources panel in the Risk Analysis Dashboard is using the Normalized Risk Object field. Also shown on the right, a Risk Notable in Incident Review now shows an All Risk Objects field, which is also using the Normalized Risk Object field. The Risk Object here has an IP address, MAC address, and host name that have been grouped together. Entity Zones. The ANI framework allows for the configuration of entity zones. An enrichment field used to differentiate events which may share common attributes. This prevents risk events from different zones from being grouped together. For example, events sharing a local IP address may use location data to differentiate from what office they originated. Prior to ES 7.1, the RBA framework did not account for the entity zone when grouping risk events. They were grouped solely by risk object, causing notable events to surface with different contributing risk entities. This is shown in the example for events with a field called location, and the field attribute being assigned to a zone. For example, if the location is set to SF, it is assigned to the San Francisco zone. Then you can see in the risk notable details on the right, the risk object is assigned to the entity zone of San Francisco. These enhancements to the RBA framework are available on-prem or in the cloud and are available for search head clustering and index replication. When upgrading to ES 7.1, contributing risk events for risk notables may not be visible in the risk event timeline if the risk notables are created before the upgrade and any one of the following conditions are met. Entity zones are newly enabled. Changes are made to the entity zones that apply to the existing risk notables 
or the Assets and Identities Framework is disabled. Also note that a new Use Splunk Enterprise Security Risk-Based Alerting Manual has been added to the Splunk Enterprise Security documentation at the website shown here. Next, let's take a look at the new Threat Topology Visualization. The Threat Topology Visualization allows you to quickly discover relationships between assets and identities and threat objects, enabling you to develop immediate situational awareness when working with risk notables and know when a threat object has recently impacted other assets and identities thus reducing mean time to resolution for potentially broad-reaching investigations by simplifying how they work with assets, identities, and threat objects. Accessing the visualization. From in Risk Notable in Incident Review, simply click the number in the Risk Events column, or select Risk Event Timeline from the drop-down menu for the associated risk object. Once the Risk Events window opens, click the Threat Topology button on the top right corner of the window. The Risk Events window will show the Threat Topology view. As you can see here, it shows the risk object along with the risk score and number of contributing events. Also shown, if configured, is the asset or identity information for the risk object. In this case, the risk object is an identity, and it has been enhanced with information like email address, phone number, and business unit. Then, the window displays the risk objects on the right and any related threat objects on the left, allowing you to quickly view other potential risks. Another new feature with ES7.1 is the MITRE attack matrix. Let's take a look. The MITRE ATT&CK matrix displays which MITRE ATT&CK techniques contributed to the risk notable and the tactics those techniques fall under in the MITRE framework. This is available for risk notable events in Incident Review and is found under the MITRE ATT&CK Posture for this Notable dropdown when looking at the details of a notable. MITRE tactics are along the top of the matrix and any detections or techniques that contributed to this risk notable are shown below the corresponding tactic. You can click a technique to be forwarded to the MITRE website for the full details and documentation. You will notice that the MITRE attack matrix displays detections in two ways. First, in dark purple, we have the detections and notable. These are the techniques that are found in the annotations.mitre underscore attack.mitre underscore technique underscore ID field of the notable event. Then in dark blue, we have the detections in selected time range. These are events found in the time range, but they did not trigger the notable. Other view options for the MITRE attack matrix are shown here. You can use the drop-down menu to display the sub-techniques that fall under each technique, as well as the details and the IDs for the techniques, allowing you to focus on the detections important to your environment. Let's take a look at how the matrix is populated. We start with the risk data model. The matrix runs a search on the risk data model to find any other MITRE annotated risk events for the given risk object for the time range selected. This takes advantage of that normalized risk object field in the risk data model that we discussed earlier. Next, we have the MITRE underscore attack underscore lookup. The techniques and tactics that populate the MITRE attack matrix in the details of a risk notable come from this lookup. The MITRE ATT&CK lookup is populated by the MITRE underscore ATT&CK threat intelligence source, which downloads and parses the raw MITRE data and writes it to the lookup using a saved search. The MITRE enrichment is added to the risk notable via a props.conf entry, 
which applies the results from the MITRE ATT&CK lookup to the risk notable. When troubleshooting the MITRE ATT&CK matrix, ensure the MITRE ATT&CK threat intelligence source is enabled and properly functioning. This is needed to populate the MITRE ATT&CK lookup. You can verify that it's working properly using the input lookup command with the MITRE underscore ATT&CK underscore lookup. The data that populates the detections in selected time range comes from a search on the risk.allrisk dataset over the time range selected in the visualization, which is by default 30 days. If you change this time range or collapse the expanded matrix, the search will terminate if it's still running. For the matrix to work properly, ensure the risk data model is functioning. Let's take a look at some changes made to the ES dashboards in ES 7.1. The Incident Review dashboard now uses pie charts instead of donut charts. Use these pie charts and the timeline range in Incident Review for greater insight into the notable events and isolate specific time periods of interest during an investigation. Also new with ES 7.1, is the ability to upgrade various dashboards from simple XML to Splunk Dashboard Studio. This improves performance and consistency across Splunk products to get better insight from data visualizations. You can also upgrade custom dashboards to use Splunk Dashboard Studio. Here we have the steps with examples to upgrade a dashboard from simple XML to Splunk Dashboard Studio. Start by identifying the XML file name for the dashboard from the dashboard's URL in your web browser. Next, connect via SSH to the Splunk instance where ES is installed and change to the Splunk install directory. Then locate the local copy of the dashboard XML definition file. Next, delete the XML definition file from the local directory. Once the file is removed, refresh the web browser for your Splunk instance. If the updated dashboard does not display, try clearing your browser cache. Here we see a comparison of the XML version of the Security Posture Dashboard and the upgraded layout following the Splunk Dashboard Studio upgrade. Noticeable differences for confirmation of the upgrade include the new button layout in the top right corner and the upgraded spark lines in the panels. Our final topic is the new documentation available for ES 7.1. A new Using Splunk Enterprise Security Risk-Based Alerting Manual has been added to the Splunk Enterprise Security documentation at the link shown here. And a new subject has been added to the Administering Splunk Enterprise Security Manual to improve troubleshooting performance issues due to large KV store collections. Please visit the link shown here. Key topics we have covered in this course include the integration of cloud-based streaming analytics in ES 7.1, the latest enhancements made to the risk-based alerting framework to incorporate asset and identity information, as well as entity zones. The new threat topology visualization that shows the relationship between risk objects and threat objects. The new MITRE ATT&CK matrix available for risk notable events in the incident review dashboard. Various upgrades to ES dashboards. And the new documentation available for risk-based alerting and troubleshooting large KV store collections. If you are interested in taking any of Splunk's enterprise security courses, please visit the training and certification page on splunk.com. If you are interested in becoming a Splunk Enterprise Security Certified Administrator, please visit the Splunk certification page on splunk.com. Thanks very much for attending this course and finding out what's new in ES 7.1.